What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. I have got a bonus video for you. This is not part of my 365 day graphic novel review challenge. This is just a little something extra for you. Uh, last week I reviewed the first two volumes of Mice Templar by Michael Oming and uh, Brian Glass and Victor Santos. And uh, after I did those videos I was contacted by Brian Glass and he said uh, he really liked my videos and that was really nice of him to say. And he asked if I would want uh, PDF copies of the volumes that I did not already have. And I said, yeah, that'd be awesome. And uh, he told me something that I did not know. He said that this week is actually the 10th anniversary of Mike's Templar, which I did not know that whenever I was uh, planning out my videos that I did last week. Uh, so that was just a really amazing coincidence. And so uh, he was uh, saying that he was trying to kind of uh, re-advertise Mike's Templar in its 10th anniversary. And I think that's a very noble goal because I've really been digging this series uh, after I uh, got back into it. Uh, you know, I read volume one a long time ago didn't like it very much and then when I reread it uh, much more recently I liked it a lot more I was an idiot the first time I read it I have no idea what I was thinking and so anyway uh, I told uh, Mr. Glass that I would uh, read these uh, volumes uh, that he sent me as a PDF and I would talk about them originally I was planning on doing one giant bonus video where I would talk about all the other volumes of the series that I did not already talk about uh, but that's five volumes and I don't think that I would be able to do uh, the rest of the series justice by trying to talk about it in one one, uh, even a very large video, I don't think that I would be able to cover everything that I would want to say. So I'm going to be reviewing uh, Mice Templar Volume 2.2. I don't have it in my hands because I read it as a PDF. Uh, so you're going to see a uh, thumbnail for the video right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is the second half of Volume 2 of this series. Uh, basically, as I understand it, uh, Volume 2 uh, was split into two separate trade paperbacks because it was so long. It was, I think, nine issues total. And uh, this is is the second half of uh, that volume. And this could have been called Mice Templar The Plot Thickens because boy does the plot thicken here. Uh, the thing that surprised me the most about this volume is that it progresses things a lot faster than I thought that it would. Uh, one of the things that was kind of driving Carrick, uh, he's kind of our uh, Luke Skywalker protagonist of the series, uh, one of the things, uh, the big thing that is driving him in the first two volumes is saving his friends and family uh, from Cricket's Glen. And uh, that is something that straight up happens in this volume. Uh, I don't think that's much of a spoiler uh, because uh, there's lots of other crazy things that happen here that I'm not going to spoil. Uh, but uh, it's so crazy to me how uh, whenever I was reading the first two volumes, I was thinking, okay, that's going to happen at the end of the series. He either is or he is not going to succeed in rescuing his family and friends. And that's going to be at the end of the series. Nope, it happens in the third trade paperback. We've still got four more volumes and I have no idea what's going to happen next. Uh, I am I'm very excited to see what is going to be driving Carrick to do what he does uh, starting in uh, Volume 3. Uh, that's going to be very interesting to see. I have no idea because I haven't read uh, the other PDFs yet, uh, but this book has got lots of other surprises that it throws your way. Uh, there is a character that I thought was dead uh, that was uh, allegedly killed off in Volume 1, and if you've read Volume 1, you might be able to figure out who I am talking about, but this character uh, had what I thought was a very grisly demise, and then uh, based on something that happens at the beginning of this volume, 2.2, uh, uh, where Carrick meets uh, some bats, uh, and we find out the bats are not uh, mindless creatures that I thought that they were whenever uh, they made their brief appearance at the end of Volume 1. Uh, once we find out that the bats actually have sense and they have agency and uh, they seemingly have some kind of evil maybe evil scheme uh, going on once we find that out uh, the return of this one character that I thought was dead makes a whole lot of sense uh, but I was really excited to see this character uh, because uh, this is a character who uh, we're not meant to like this character uh, but I don't think that we are actually meant to hate this character either I don't think that we're supposed to just outright hate him uh, and maybe I've already spoiled who it is I won't spoil it just in case you haven't figured out my uh, somewhat cryptic hints but uh, this is a character I'm very excited to see what this character is going to be up to. Uh, we can see uh, this character paired off with someone else that we have been uh, briefly following uh, since Volume 1, and that is going to be a very interesting partnership. I have a feeling that is going to lead to some uh, butting of heads a couple volumes down the line, uh, possibly between Carrick and uh, this other character. Uh, I'm being very vague here because I don't want to spoil everything. Uh, needless to say, I really like this volume quite a bit. Uh, one thing that I uh, commended this series on in Volume 2.1 was that I felt like it basically uh, kind of uh, 
reined it in a little bit. Uh, you have uh, Carrick and Cassius. They're kind of going on their adventure. And then you're following uh, the mice from uh, Cricket's Glen in prison uh, in the capital city. And that was basically all that was going on, although there were a few new uh, characters and subplots that were introduced in Volume 2.1. Uh, for example, Alexis, who is uh, not really uh, the queen. He, uh, she's kind of like a, a consort for the king. Uh, we see her, and we see that she's up to something, but we don't really know what. Uh, this volume develops her quite a bit. Uh, she is given a little bit of a sad backstory, although I'm not entirely sure if she's telling the truth when she gives that backstory to Leto. Uh, it could be that she's just screwing with him, and she just wants to mess around with these prisoners from uh, Cricket's Glen, or maybe that actually is her backstory. Uh, I don't really think that she would have much reason to lie about that unless, like I said, she just wants to screw with him. Uh, but uh, this is a character who I still don't know if we can trust her. Uh, she kind of reminds me of uh, this other character that I've been talking vaguely about, where we're not supposed to hate this character. Uh, they are not uh, one-dimensional, just pure evil or pure good. Uh, there is a little bit of depth and dimension to Alexis, but uh, she is not 100% one way or another. And uh, I don't know if we're going to be seeing more of her because she is involved in the cliffhanger at the end of this book, uh, which is another thing thing that kind of had me picking up my jaw from the floor. I was thinking, okay, uh, that's interesting because we've been hearing a lot of stuff about uh, King Icarus and how he was uh, involved very heavily in uh, the fall of the Templars. And then uh, there is a bit of a cliffhanger there uh, that involves that and his involvement with the Templars. And she's part of that cliffhanger also. So uh, I hope that we do get to see more of her later on, although maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we do get a little bit more with her. Uh, this book kind of culminates in uh, this big, huge action scene that in a way kind of reminds me of, uh, I've been talking about how this series kind of reminds me of Star Wars a little bit. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a Star Wars movie, but uh, not like The Phantom Menace where you've got four different things all going on at the same time and it's kind of distracting and it's hard to keep up with everything. It's not like that because uh, the big action scene of this volume, it all culminates in one place and there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's not complicated or confusing if you've been reading the rest of this series. Uh, there are at least three or four different things that you're kind of having to keep up with. Uh, you've got the return of this one character. Uh, he's doing some stuff. You've got the priests. They want to sacrifice King Icarus. And uh, so you're seeing them. They're saying stuff like, uh, patience, brothers, patience, we're going to do this. And if you haven't read the other volumes, you might be a little confused. But if you have, then uh, it's a lot to keep up with, but you can keep up with it. Uh, you've got Icarus. He wants to ascend to godhood. Uh, you've got Alexis. Uh, she's uh, kind of planning something, or maybe she's trying to take advantage of the chaos. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but it's a lot of stuff that has been built up uh, very well. It's not like uh, it suddenly throws in some stuff and you're trying to think, wait a minute, uh, what's going on here? Uh, it feels like the entire series has been building to this action sequence, which is crazy because this is not even halfway through the series yet. Uh, we're just under halfway. Uh, so, like I said, I'm very excited to see what will happen next. Uh, but uh, that's about all that I have to say about Destiny 2.2. Uh, I like this volume. Uh, I am going to see if I can find a physical copy. Uh, I did like... Uh, this volume enough that I am going to buy it even though I have read it as a digital. Uh, I recommend that you guys buy it as well. And uh, I am going to try and uh, pump out some more Mice Templar reviews uh, throughout the rest of this week. Uh, happy 10th anniversary Mice Templar. Uh, this has been a really awesome series. I'm really glad that I uh, rediscovered it last week. And uh, I hope that you guys have enjoyed hearing me talk about it. And I hope that you guys uh, will go and check out the series and uh, see what you've been missing if you haven't read it before. Uh, so those are my thoughts on volume 2.2. I hope that you guys like this video and uh, if you did be sure to like share comment and subscribe and i'll be doing uh, lots of other stuff this week uh, in the meantime you guys have a great rest of the day catch you later